Where are we going like that in broad daylight? Into town. In that dress? You're going to get a terrible sunburn. This dress is the latest thing in Goaty's Ladies Book. Well, either the sun's mighty weak back east or those Goaty ladies have hides like mules. Do me a favor. Tell Mother I'll be home later on this afternoon. I'll tell her. Bye-bye. You better get some cocoa butter while you're in town. You're sure gonna need it. prefer a light or a heavy handle for a quick draw. Good morning, Miss Horner. Good morning, Mr. Breckenridge. What a pleasant surprise. I was just about to say the same thing. Thank you. Isn't that one of Godey's latest frocks? Why, yes, it's, it's called a morning dress. Yes, all the ladies in New York are wearing them now. Really? Oh, they're considered to be the height of sophistication. That one makes you look at least 16. I'm well over 16. Well over 16, you don't say. You're impossible. <laughs> so I've been told. Well, what brings you to town on such a hot day? I have an appointment at the dressmakers. Well, may I have the pleasure of accompanying you? Well, thank you, but you needn't bother. Oh, nonsense, it's no bother at all. Well, I've seen you this far. I'll see you to the door. It seems that your dressmaker's forgotten about your appointment. Oh, well, she, she probably just stepped out for a minute. I'll just wait. I'll wait with you. No. It really isn't necessary. I, I'm sure she won't be long. Why, I wouldn't dream of allowing a lady to wait alone. It's awfully warm, isn't it? Indeed it is. Maybe my appointment's for next week. I, I mean, I might have gotten them mixed up. Really? Yes, I, I don't think I'll wait any longer. A wise decision. And as much as your plans have changed, Miss Audra, perhaps you'd like to have an ice with me at the hotel. Why, thank you, Mr. Breckenridge. I, you don't think I had an appointment at all, do you? Who you think I came all the way into town just to see you? Yes, I do. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> blind or something? Didn't you see my iron stuck over there? We saw it. Well, what do you think you're doing? 
I got 50 head back there coming in here to drink. Well, we'll be watering out of here by the time they get here. That ain't the point. It's first come, first served at a community hall, and you know it. You agreed along with the rest. We couldn't wait, Jace. We found those cows in a dried up water hole. No telling how long they've been without water. You still got water in your high pasture? Why didn't you take them there? They're too weak. They'd never make it that far. My cows are weak, too. But I wouldn't go hogging the community hole when I had some of my own. Hogging? You want us to let these cows die, Jace? If that's what you want, say so. Let them drink. To my way of thinking, hoarding water in a drought the same as stealing. Think of it, I don't feel too much like playing either. And when I got to Paris, I discovered he taught me Italian. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm late, Mother. We were beginning to worry. Worry? We're about to send out a posse. My apologies, Mrs. Barkley. Audra and I met accidentally in town, and I was so engrossed in her company that I completely lost track of the time. We were only concerned about her driving in the dark. Thank you for seeing her home. Not at all. Well, as long as you're here, Scott, why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, yes, Scott, please stay. Well, uh, if I wouldn't be intruding, I... Not at all. We'd love to have you. I'll tell Silas to sit another place. Sit down, Scott. Can I get you brandy? Fine. The mother? No, thank you. Well, what's the latest on the drought situation? Getting much worse. All the little water holes around are pretty well dried up, and the ranchers are using one community water hole. That's not working out too good either. Nick and I had a little run in with Jace Holman today. Well, it takes courage to handle adversity. It's a quality I greatly admire, but often find most lacking when the chips are down. Well, you must figure the ranchers have courage or else you wouldn't have made the loan. On the contrary, Heath, I think they don't. When the going gets rough, I think they'll fall apart. And then you'd acquire a great deal of valuable land without having to bargain for it at auction, right? Exactly. Well, I disagree with you, Scott. I think the ranchers around here have more than enough courage. Then I get my money back with interest. Either way, I can't lose. That's a pretty cold-blooded attitude, isn't it? A cold-blooded attitude is a necessary part of my Midas touch. As I remember, Midas came to regret his golden touch. He killed everyone he loved. I shall try to profit by his mistakes, Mrs. Barclay. Dinner's ready, Mother. I hope you like chicken creole, Scott. Silas prides himself on it. As of the moment, it's my favorite dish. Nick. Get to it, because I plan to drink this whole thing dry. If you don't, I guarantee to finish the job. What's the matter? Sulfur. Oh, well, now that's all we need. We'll bring sulfur up through. Sounded like dynamite. Yeah, right over that rise. At that blast? Any objections? What's the idea? We're dynamiting for rain. You're what? Dynamiting for rain? 
Worked in Nebraska, dynamited three days and broke the drought complete. Uh, probably was due to break anyhow. No, sir, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Mm -hmm. Jackrabbits are green. Well, all right, don't believe me, but it's my land and we'll do what we want. There's only one big water hole left and it's getting lower. We gotta do something. Well, the stream that feeds that big water hole runs right under this ground here. You keep blasting, you're gonna follow it for sure. It's already beginning to go yellow. What are you talking about? We were just there. Sulfur's leaking into the south end. We better set these over in the West Canyon. Be better if you stop blasting altogether. You Barclays wouldn't lend us money, and I don't notice you sharing water, so don't give us any advice! <laughs> Wasn't that your horse I saw tied up in town today? Well, it may well have been. Why? Well, usually when you're in town, I can expect a visit. And then the extreme pleasure of taking the prettiest young lady in Stockton to lunch. Well, I appreciate the compliment, but I couldn't have had lunch with you today anyway. I gathered as much. You've, um, you've been seeing quite a bit of Scott lately, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I'll never be able to thank you enough. Thank me? For what? Well, it's because of you that he came to Stockton. Well, not exactly because of me. He never was one to miss a business opportunity, you know. Well, anyway, you had something to do with it, and, and I can't thank you enough. Not nearly enough. Well, I wish I could honestly say you're welcome. Audra, how much do you think you know about Scott? Well, to begin with, he was born in New York City in 1841 of English parents. Now, that isn't what I mean. <laughs> I know it isn't. Why do you ask, Jared? Well, I just don't want to see you get hurt, honey. I know Scott well enough to feel positive he'd never hurt me. You're sure? I'm sure. But thanks for worrying, big brother. What you are tonight? An enchantress. A ravishingly beautiful enchantress. Which one? Mm -hmm. Cleopatra, Delilah, Julia, take your pick. Cleopatra. I would have thought you'd say Julia. See how little you know about the real me? Oh, what a heavenly night. The stars seem almost close enough to touch. <laughs> <laughs> 